stop standing. Finish him. Finish him. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is a game focusing on some of the most harrowing situations a country's military can be brought in to stop. Anytime a bomb or hostage situation requires the aid of a counter-terrorism unit, it's clear that no two situations are ever quite the same. The game's map pool features a variety of different locations, illustrating that an attack or active terrorism can occur, well, anywhere. Some of these maps are just meant to add gameplay content, but there are several that Ubisoft designed with real-world events or locations in mind, inspiring the look of the map or connecting it to an actual siege that occurred throughout history. It's not the case so much with newer maps, but many from initial release and some seasons afterward bear some striking resemblances. This is Rainbow Six Siege Maps in real life. Really quick, this is a complete list of connected maps as of Operation Phantom Sight in June 2019, and not all information here is presented as fact. While Ubisoft won't necessarily confirm a real-world reference, there are lots of theories that make more sense than others with an appropriate amount of research. I will specifically mention if a hypothesis seems more stretched or unbelievable than others do. When regarding the Siege map pool, it's worth looking at their connections to the real world in a few different ways. I've basically broken it into four tiers. Maps that don't connect to an actual location or event at all, basically acting as filler content, ones that connect to a real location, ones that connect to a real event, and one map that does both. That map is Oregon. Perhaps to nobody's surprise, the map isn't actually based in the state of Oregon in the US. It's based on a siege taking place in Waco, Texas in 1993. The building was known as the Mount Carmel Center, about 13 miles outside the city of Waco, that served as the headquarters for an extreme religious cult of Seventh-day Adventists, known as the Branch Davidians. Their leader, David Koresh, believed that he was a prophet sent by God to help bring about the end of the world. Acting on suspicions of the group stockpiling illegal weapons, among several other charges, the ATF and FBI would lay siege to the building in April 1993, lasting 51 days, killing 82 Davidians, including Koresh, and burning the whole compound to the ground. Just from the exterior pictures, it's clear that the map and the Mount Carmel Center are essentially the same building. The roof shape is a dead giveaway as is the silo on site and the construction portion on the side, similar to the map's spawn point that leads into the basement. Some of the interior rooms also match up with the Waco Siege, most notably on the second floor. The armory room relates to the Davidians stockpiling weapons, and the kids' bedroom references the fact that of the 82 Davidian deaths, 25 of them were children. That's the game's closest representation of an actual siege on an actual location. The next tier is maps that are based on a real event, but not necessarily at the map's location. The first example of this is Consulate. The building is similar in architecture to the French Embassy in Alexandria, Egypt, but the map description places the consulate in Abidjan of Ivory Coast in West Africa. If we look around the map, the area surrounding the main building is the same as the location of the French Embassy in Abidjan, including a highway, football stadium, skyscraper, and gas station. Also, if you don't think it's the French Embassy, then the Eiffel Tower and the French flag and piano room would like a word with you. But here's the disconnect. There's never been a terrorist incident in a French embassy, but there has been one inside an Iranian one. The inspiration for the map comes from the Iranian embassy siege in West London, England in April of 1980. Six members of the Democratic Revolutionary Front for the Liberation of Arabistan got inside the building and held 26 people hostage, demanding the release of prisoners in Iran and their own safe passage out of the country. The British military intervened, attempting to secure the release of the hostages, but the Iranians used their leverage to have their demands broadcast on national television. If you want more information on this incident, the guys at the Infographics Show have a fantastically detailed video describing the whole thing. Go check that out if you want more info. The siege would end with an assault by the British Special Air Service, split into two teams and killing all but one of the hostage takers. Coincidentally, the assault was authorized by British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, and was carried out under the codename Operation Nimrod. Huh. One can speculate if the reason the consulate map wasn't the Iranian embassy is due to it being wedged in between two other institutions as a part of the same building. The French embassy looks much more photogenic, but it's still clear where that main inspiration came from.
The other map in this tier is Presidential Plain. The map's interior decor looks most similar to either a British Commonwealth Royal Plain or a fictional interpretation of the United States Air Force One, though the map description does put it on the runway of Heathrow Airport in London. But like Consulate, there's never been an incident on either one of these aircraft. The connection comes instead from Lufthansa Flight 181, a Boeing 737 that was hijacked by Palestinian terrorists in 1977. Named Landshut, the aircraft was initially hijacked while en route to Frankfurt, Germany, with 91 hostages on board. The Palestinians demanded that the plane be taken to Cyprus, but a lack of fuel forced it to land in Rome, Italy. This would be only the first stop in an insane journey that took Landshut and the hostages from Rome to Cyprus, Bahrain, Dubai, South Yemen, and finally, Somalia. When it landed in Mogadishu, Somalia, a team of German GSG-9 operators carried out Operation Fire Magic, using ladders to get on the plane's wings while under the cover of a diversionary fire, killing three of the terrorists and saving all but the pilot. Another theory about the origin of this map comes from the hijacking of Air France Flight 8969 in 1994, because it was rescued by operatives from the French GIGN. But the sheer size of the plane, 224 passengers as opposed to Landshut's 86, and the fact that the rescue operation didn't incorporate ladders attached to the wings, makes the Lufthansa flight the more plausible inspiration. Plus, the Wikipedia page for that one mentions Siege, so whatevs. Oregon, Consulate, and Plain are the three maps that are tied to an actual historical counterterrorism operation. The next tier of maps connect to an actual location that you can go out and find somewhere on the planet. Bank is most closely tied to a Bank of America located in Washington, D.C., and while we can't actually get pictures of the bank's interior to compare, we can look at the similarities in the map's logo design, exterior architecture, and this image taken from the outside of a chandelier, similar to that of the ones inside the map's main lobby. Tower is actually a combination of buildings with a unique easter egg to confirm it. The building itself is called the Makmeyak Tower, which is an old translated name of Nam San. The exterior is based on the Nam San Tower in Seoul, South Korea, which can actually be seen outside of the North Attacker Spawn if you look all the way in the back. The interior is not the Nam San Tower, but rather based on the Lot World Tower, another major landmark in Seoul. It is also visible if you look from the South Attacker Spawn. Clubhouse is based on a Hells Angels Biker Club bar located in Hanover, Lower Saxony, Germany. GSG-9 operators were specifically involved in raiding a chapter leader's house in Germany in 2012 as a part of a crackdown. That house doesn't relate to the map in any way, though it does contain several references to the Sons of Anarchy TV series inside. Hereford Base is known as RAF Credenhill, located in the village of Credenhill near Hereford in the United Kingdom. It was commissioned in 1940 to be a campus for military training schools, and was shut down in 1994. While it's no longer present on the reworked version of the map that came with Operation Grim Sky, the original version features lots of training targets outside, and the main building filled with lots of additional military exercise dummies. This is a reference to the real RAF Credit Hills Killing House, a building used to train soldiers in numerous counter-terrorism strikes. Coastlines building is located in Ibiza in the Balearic Islands in Spain. Yes, the actual building does exist. Reddit users were able to track down its exact coordinates, though it's inaccessible to Google Maps behind a gate. The same white look and building structure are present even if only from a few blurry images. Favela is literally the entire city of Rio de Janeiro. So, Canal is based on a building located at the Blom & Voss shipyard in Hamburg, Germany. The map includes German flags and a room full of football paraphernalia, and also has a massive transport ship outside, though the one present close to the actual building isn't on fire. Lastly, Café Dostoyevsky is probably the most well-known connection in the game, as the map looks oh so nearly identical to an actual restaurant called Café Pushkin in Moscow, Russia. We even have loads of interior pictures to compare, and it looks even more similar after the map's rework in Operation Phantom Sight. These are all of the maps in Siege that correspond to anything in the real world. The last tier of maps are either 100% filler content, not connected to anything, or contain enough references to make very loose assumptions. Fortress, Skyscraper, Outback, and Villa don't correspond to a real-world counterpart, at least not from any of the research I could find. 
There's an idea floating around that Chalet is physically inspired by the Villard Notre Dame in France, as the map description puts it in the French Alps. But one thread I dug up suggests its reason for being in the game is because of the botched FBI attack on Ruby Ridge in Idaho in 1992. I think you could make the argument that Ubisoft linked these two together, but I don't see nearly as much evidence to support the idea as, for example, Oregon, so I don't think I would have put it in a higher tier. The name for the ship on yacht was originally the Boreal, a reference to the La Boreal vessel used for Arctic cruises, but the name was changed after patch 2.3 to read Aklark instead. The ship on the map is far too small to actually be a La Boreal cruise ship, so one can only wonder why Ubisoft went with the name change after all. Bartlett University has long been rumored to be Harvard University, as the map description puts it in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the same city as Harvard and I doubt that Ubisoft would bother making a reference to the Episcopal Divinity School with Harvard being just a couple blocks away. House claims to be located in Los Angeles, California, but the surrounding hills look more like a state in the United States Midwest, and the initial E3 2014 gameplay trailer identifies it as a Boston suburb, so I honestly don't know where the hell this thing is. Border really tries its hardest to look like the most generic Middle Eastern border control checkpoint you've ever seen, but popular theories suggest it either being Egyptian or Israeli. I personally don't think it's Israeli, due to the noted lack of any Hebrew text on the signs. This is all in Arabic. But there's an APC outside that looks strikingly like an Egyptian BMR 600, but again, there's a lack of evidence to make me swing one way on the other on who it belongs to. Last and certainly least, there's Meme Park. Uh, I mean, Theme Park, sorry. It basically takes any abandoned amusement park you can think of seeing in Zombieland and plops it just off the Victoria Harbor in Kowloon, Hong Kong. You can actually see the mainland of Hong Kong all the way across the channel if you look out from this spawn all the way up on the roof. From a personal perspective, while I was happy to see that Ubisoft was inspired by actual terrorist situations to help the game feel more realistic, I'm disappointed by how many maps don't actually fit that mold. We only got three maps that are based on a siege, but they mentioned they were also inspired by a fourth, the Moscow Theater hostage crisis in 2002, that didn't make it into the game, and I don't think it's cafe. I'm by no means bashing the map or art teams that work on these things, I'm just a little disappointed by not seeing more references to the real world. In any case, it's still fascinating to me to research the incidents that inspired the maps, so I've included links to lots of material that I used to help me write this out, if you'd like to dive into more of it yourself. It's a sad reality that anybody could seize or strike anywhere in the world, provided they have the means to do so, which only continues to sow fear and make the world a harsher place. But Rainbow Six Siege does a good job of grounding lots of their map options in reality, making the game we all love a gritty pseudo-simulation. One can only hope that the map we get in Year 4 Season 3 can make another of these connections, and give us all a reason to celebrate the men and women who put their lives on the line to stop it before it gets worse. Hey there! Thanks so much for watching, I'm really happy you stuck with me until the end. I got the inspiration from this video by just reading through articles about some of these situations, and I saw that nobody on YouTube had done a comprehensive overview like this one, so I thought I'd jump in there. If you enjoyed this and would like to see me suck more at Siege, then please feel free to follow me on Twitch. I'm usually streaming a couple of nights a week, and would honestly love to see you there. I also have a few more ideas similar to this one on deck for future videos, so please feel free to stick around and see what else comes out of this dumb head of mine. So, uh, if I got anything wrong, uh, you can also leave some feedback in the comments as well. Uh, I'd love to figure out if I got anything incorrect, and I can update the description if I find any differences or discrepancies or whatever. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching.